Ah, uh, yes. We are back in Branson, Missouri. We're not going to get some old time photos today. <laughs> and Veterans Memorial Museum. That looks pretty cool, actually. But that's not our adventure for today. Our adventure today is something I love to do in the Wisconsin Dells and have never done here. Oh my gosh, look at this little downtown area. I've never been here before. I've never been this far down. Wow. You can get t-shirts and souvenirs. There's a five and dime store. The last of an American tradition. Branson Visitor Center over there. This is cool. Well, we have secured a parking spot in that place over there. And look at this mural. Greetings from Branson. They have a guy zip lining right up there. Got a huge guitar in the middle, go-karts. That is beautiful. And right there, that's it ladies and gentlemen, Branson Duck Tours. That is gonna be us in just a short while. I'm so excited. Well, hello there, and welcome to yet another beautiful day for an adventure. We are at Branson Duck Tours in downtown Branson. Look at that beautiful train behind me. This is an absolutely perfect day for what we are about to do. And so, if you are brand new to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome to another edition of Tommy Travels. It's Tommy Travels. Come on with me, you guys. Let's go see what there is to see. And so there's where we checked in for our boat ride and we have secured a boarding pass. Now we're just hanging around here at Branson Landing. That's what this area is called, apparently. I did not know that when we drove in. But all sorts of different little restaurants and um, stores. There's a footwear store, famous footwear. Silversmiths, I don't know what that is. Massage places. Attic salt, if you need salt for your attic, <laughs> you can get it right there. <laughs> An Italian restaurant, it's really neat down here. And here's our tour right here, Branson Duck Tours. Book your tickets, BransonDuckTours.com. I like this little gopher here with all the frogs. That is really cute. And he's bringing down the stairs so we can hop aboard. And here's our bus for the day, or boat, or bus. Which is it? <laughs> Both, I guess. This is gonna be fun. So are you having a birthday? And we have our spot right here, right towards the front. Good views out the non-existent windows. This is gonna be great. Seatbelt so we can take off. <laughs> Not many seatbelts around here. Everybody <laughs> You don't have any seatbelts. <laughs> Those two chairs there, these two here, and these two there have seatbelts. Everybody else, you just got a handle to grab. <laughs> I can't believe everybody fell for that. <laughs> Hello there. Is this my? I'm on the witness protection program, so you're oh. gonna have to. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to wear protection. Close this out. <laughs> my name's Charlie. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'll be the guy to tell them all the awful jokes. And y'all from St. Louis in the very back. Yeah. Very good. This year we got Pujols. Albert Pujols came back. We got Yadier retiring too, and uh, Adam Wainwright. Talk a little baseball here just for a second. Last night the Blues won. That was a fun hockey game. I don't know if y'all got to watch it. Uh, so, 
Not that I'm from St. Louis, but living down here, you just pick it up. I grew up in a little town called Oak Grove, Missouri, and it's up by Kansas City. So I grew up, of course, a, a Chief fan and a Royal fan, but it uh, seems that the Cardinals went a lot more in the Royals, so I've kind of changed. <laughs> oh, I still root for the Royals in case Mom ever watches it. <laughs> but uh, glad to have you all on board. Where are you from, sir? St. Paul. Minnesota. Yes. Man, you people are nice. <laughs> I just never meet anybody from Minnesota, Wisconsin. It's just grumpy. <laughs> They're just all like, howdy, you know, like, you guys are almost too nice, you're like, Canada nice. <laughs> We're close Most to that. are too nice. All right, uh, so right in front of you, you guys have these OML handles, what I call them, the Lord handles. That's them. Keep them up to them if you want to. I mean, you never know about these tourists. I mean, they'll pull right out in front of you. You get a bunch of people down here from Oklahoma or Minnesota or St. Louis, <laughs> and they might, you, know, <laughs> you never know. You never know what they might do. So every now and then, old Captain Doug has to slam on the brakes. So just be ready. For the most part, we're, we've been doing real good. Across the streets, our convention center. There used to be a pencil factory here, so that's why they designed it to, for those things that look like pencils. Those little, oh, those little barriers. Yeah, there was a, the logging industry came in here in 1906 uh, with the railroad. That was when it was finished. They did a clear cut in this part of the states. It was just crazy. This was back uh, way, way back, 19, you know, before 1910. See the purple building over on your left? That building right there, I want you to keep, it, keep that in your thoughts. I'm gonna tell you a little history story. Long, long ago, way back before the, la the landing was here, back before the Dead Sea was even sick. It was just, it was long ago. They had a, a guy named Reuben Branson came here to town with his wife Mary. They came right down here on the on the banks of the White River, which is all that was here, and they built a little general store and they built a post office. And they ran that for many years. Thirty years later, we became a pretty good sized little city. So they decided to incorporate us and put a dot on the map. And so they called us Branson, because that's where they sent them out. Like, what does this go? Oh, well, just send it over to old man Branson. That's how we got our name Branson. Oh. Um, things were going great. Had a pretty nice town going, you know. And then five months after that, it burnt to the ground. They had everything in Branson, well, I mean, up in that the whole downtown area, burnt to the ground except that purple building. That's the only thing that survived. It. Um, and uh, I think what happened was they just got the bucket brigade started up the hill and got as far as there. It was the saloon. Maybe I should mention that. <laughs> they decided, well, let's just save the saloon, boys. And so they did. And that's the, the only building left from the original Branson. This little landmark in right here, it was here. It survived the fire. The fire didn't get this far downtown. Not a town. Reuben and Mary T. We're going to talk about them here in a little bit. Now this body of water is up. As you can see, the cottonwoods here, they're all underwater. This, this body of water bubbles up out of the ground. I really like how tidy. Now this is a, a pretty el a pretty good, uh, I don't know, I see them out here, elderly couple. And they keep that place looking so tidy and nice. All those rocks and the way that house was built, it's got siding over it now, just like this one. It's all rock from the river because they did a clear cut here, the forest industry. I mean, talking from Oklahoma and Kansas line all the way this way, took every single tree you see, they were all gone. Railroad brought the timber industry. They brought uh, a lot of other stuff. They brought all the material that they needed for the power site dam, and uh, they would unload it from the train, put it on a barge, and send it down river to Forsyth, where they were building the dam. And on the boxes, it was stamped Taney Como for Taney County, Missouri. But Taney Como is what they started calling it, and that's how it got its name, Taney Como. And that's the lake we will be on shortly. We're going in that lake. Now there was a man that came here in 1933. His name was Jim Owen. Jim Owen started a fishing service and a uh, guided service. He had all his guides dress up in hillbilly outfits and talk hillbillies that could. He had an amazing uh, fishing service. Did well. You, you look at any old picture back in the day of old uh, uh, people fishing, you'll see a lot of them in Johnny Morris's Bass Pro Shop and around. And on the side of that boat, it will say Owen Fishing Line. 
That was him. Charles Heston was down here fishing with Jim Owen when he got the news that uh, by telegraph that he was going to get the lead part in uh, the new movie coming out, The Ten Commandments. Wow. So uh, he, he had a lot of connections. Paul and Ruth Henning came here uh, to do some fishing as well. Fell in love with the place, went back to Hollywood. Watch your... Oh. <laughs> we got to trim that. Uh, went back to Hollywood and created in uh, Beverly Hillbillies. That was, they filmed five episodes here at Still, uh, Silver Dollar City. Jim Owen was our mayor for 12 years. He did a lot of things. The, the most coolest thing I think he did was he built a theater here. He built the very first theater, and it's right here. Right here on your left. That's Owen Theater, established in 1936. It was the very first one. It's the granddaddy of them all. And we now have over 50 theaters operating right here in Branson. And we are the live music capital of the world. But you guys, how many of y'all remember Minnie Pearl? She was Howdy! Yeah. <laughs> Howdy! Well, we're going to do that. When we see people, we're going to count to three and say, Howdy! <laughs> and I think we got a bunch up here coming. Now here's clockers coming up on your left. This is where I like to go eat. You order ham and eggs from there, they will walk out with a platter with just your ham on it. Oh my god. And then this plate's got the eggs and hash browns. Let's get these guys over here howdy. One, two, three. Howdy! <laughs> right on. Howdy! <laughs> Salute. They did not care. <laughs> oh, he's a good guy. Oh, I wash your meat, huh? All right, the third. See, yeah, the third thing that's free in this town is coming up on your left. It's these public restrooms. <laughs> they will charge you a dime to go in there. One, two, three. Howdy! <laughs> <laughs> All right, they wave. You see these guys like that gentleman there that had that fanny pack? And you can't give them guys trouble at all anymore because they got a gun in them fanny packs nowadays. That's if you're in a fanny pack, that's the that's the word around the concealed carry community. Yeah, they're packing heat. All right, uh, coming up is that cemetery that I was telling you about, where Reuben and Mary T are laid to rest. Right up here in the front left, you'll see a, a gravestone with some flowers on it. And right behind that gravestone is a gray gravestone, and it says Branson. And uh, Reuben and Mary T are buried right there. She got there in 35, he got there in 52. How many years difference is that? Anybody good with math? 35 to 52. 45, 12 years, 13 years. She beat him there by quite a bit, and that's why they put that fence around it. Uh, you know, people are just dying to get in there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, no, she died of pneumonia, and then he came a little bit later, and he died of pneumonia. So there wasn't much penicillin, I guess, in the area, or maybe it hadn't been it hadn't been uh, invented. I'll look that up for you guys. I'll have that on your desk bright and early Monday morning. There's a lot of Civil War veterans buried in that cemetery, and I went up in there and I was counting them, and just wondering how many there was, and I ended up just for fun. I counted every single headstone in that cemetery. Anybody want to guess how many people are buried up there? All of them. You're right. <laughs> all of them are. Every one. They're all... They covered them all up. Now, the Civil War veterans, you know, Missouri, we didn't really pick a side in the Civil War, so we didn't know, you know, who was for what. And there was a lot of renegades running around causing a lot of trouble. And they would go in there and they would, uh, what do they call that when you desecrate? They would desecrate their graves if it said Confederate soldier or Union soldier. So the parents of them young boys had to just say, so-and-so's here. That's all it would say. Until later, years later, they came back and did that. But those ruffians were they were a bad bunch. And they were, they would come into your place at night in your farm, and they'd run you, your, your husband, your wife, your kids out. And they might not kill you, they might burn the place down, they might just say, this is our farm, and that was it. So uh, there, was a, there was a band of fellers that got together around here and said, we need some more help, the law is not helping. And that was the Bald Knobbers. And uh, 
the, knob, the hills around here, they called knobs. Because of the clear cutting that went on, they called them ball knobs. The ball knobbers would meet on a ball knob right up here on the other side of the landing. There's a, there's a hill up there, and that's where they would meet, and they would build a big fire. And that let everybody know that we're meeting tomorrow. And they'd go up there, and they'd find out who and what they were going to run out of town. And that was the ball knobbers, and it was a really good deal for folks, especially, you know, trying to live around here and scratch out a living in this old rocky soil. And uh, unfortunately, corruption crept into those guys as well. The, the government from Jeff City had to come down and disband them. That day that they were putting the fire out, and they saved, all they saved was the purple building over here, the saloon, uh, most of the men weren't in town that day. They were up in Ozark, which is the very next town north of us, uh, attending a court hearing, or whatever you call it, a trial. They were attending a trial for some ball bombers that they had arrested. So that's kind of some cool history. And, you know, since I got this job, I've been reading just everything I can, just gobbling it up. And uh, there's so many cool things that happened around here. Now, I don't know if you all like sushi. I love it. Um, however, I've noticed that when everything I order is cooked. It just happens that way. I order rolls and Momo's Sushi and Grill is right there. It's amazing. And if you go there, order the Branson roll. It's made just for here and it's fantastic. It's got that yummy eel sauce. Oh, it's very good. Some gear here. This is All right, look at this. Fast. Yeah, see these guys going into the water. the water. Catching trout today. This is all trout water that you're about to go in. Get set. All right. Well, now if you want to get a good video of us hitting the water, you're going to want to aim right at that front window. All right. Hang on. Let me get. Let me get set. I gotta. We gotta have some. We gotta have some uh, theater. We're in Branson. Let me pull up my music. Sorry, Captain. Yeah, it. And go. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the water. Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was awesome. Got sprayed a little bit. Perfect. Yeah, man, that feels oh, good. good. It, it does. Wow. Close you down. So here's the deal in this water, it's 45 degrees, so we are not going to want to go in this water. Doug, how are we doing? Do we need to move some people to the inside the boat? Yeah, we're fine. We're fine? Alright. I'll stand over here. So, uh, here we are. Now, that, is, that black uh, paddle boat right there you're seeing is the Paddle Wheel Restaurant. Come down here and get you a libation, an adult libation of in the evening. Sit here and uh, watch the water roll by in the evening. Teddy Como is very cold for a reason. See, when um, in 1912, when we became a town and it burned down and they built a all that happened in 1912 and then backed this water up and became a good fishery. What happened was the uh, 1959 came along and they finished the Table Rock Dam. And overnight, Table Rock Dam went from, uh, turned this river from a warm body of water to a cold body of water. Because they're pulling the water through Table Rock Dam from the very bottom of Table Rock. So the water is 233 foot deep right there. And they're pulling that water through to generate electricity. And that made this very cold. So this is only 45 degrees and that's average year round. So very cold river. Uh, that's why you never see any swimming in it. Nobody skiing or tubing. They just hang out here and uh, fish. They zoom back up river and float down. We're catching trout. I don't see too many fishermen here today. Um, the Missouri Department of Conservation realized that this was going to be cold water, so they thought, why not introduce trout? And that's what they did. And trout, uh, they put 750,000 rainbow and brown trout in this lake every single year. They call this a lake because Powersite Dam's at that end and Table Rock Dam's at that end. So, 
because this impoundment is in between two dams, by definition, it's a lake. So maybe on the vacation channel, you know, in your room, you might have heard the Tri Lakes area. That's Table Rock, Tady Como, and then Bull Shoals. And Bull Shoals is a lake that this water creates when it goes over the dam at Power Side, down by Four Side. 200 years ago, if we were floating down the White River right here, we would be shot at with arrows by the Osage. They line the banks here. This is a lot of that a lot of their camps are right here and we're going to go up underneath this bridge and a, some of their main camps are up here by where Turkey Creek runs in and uh, so we find arrowheads and different artifacts around here all the time. As this water lowers, I'll be out scurrying the bank looking for anything that might have because it washes more soil away and I get to look at more stuff. You're not allowed to dig. But if the water washes it away, well then, yeah. you see it's thick in there, it's all yours. Cottonwoods are blooming right now. So that's probably why you're you're a little sneezy or maybe your eyes are itchy. Cottonwoods are releasing love into the air. Is that a way to put it? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, looks like they've got a spot for RVs up here. For the oh, yeah. RV community, that would be a nice spot right next to the lake. Oh my, yeah, there's ducks and geese all through there. And if you show up with bread, they'll be your best friend. <laughs> I'll they bet. will flock around you. <laughs> <laughs> you know you call a whole bunch of geese in one spot? Anybody? It's called a gaggle. A gaggle? Gaggle of geese. Hey, we had a buoy wash up. Oh, yeah, look at that. I wonder if that's the buoy that we, we've been seeing underwater all these weeks. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll keep a sharp eye out and see. Got a loose we have buoy. a no wake buoy up here that's been making wakes for some time. And, I think uh, I'm going to call that. went underwater. Yesterday was about four foot underwater, which is telling you how high up we are right now. They are releasing the same amount as an Olympic size swimming pool every four seconds at the dam right now. Wow. And that, we will paint a picture for you. Here we go, under the bridge. Oh, look at that, what timing, going under a bridge, and we got the train going through at the same time. Oh my goodness. What a perfect shot right there. Wow, couldn't have picked a better day to do this, that is for sure. The weather is absolutely perfect. So glad I got a chance to do this. There's some cabins up there above the lake and look at that, there's a bird flying over there too. Looks like a blue heron maybe, it just landed. Can you imagine waking up in the morning at your lakeside cabin and this is your view out here every morning? That would be great. There's a view out of the front of the cabin right here. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, we have a pontoon going by over here, too. Nice. What a relaxing way to spend a day. These pontoon boats out here are for rent. So, yeah, and you rent see this lot. tiki bar here? That tiki bar is also a boat. You can go out on a bar, have some drinks, and go out on the lake. That's like a Mercury engine in there. And from what I'm told, that thing just flies around this this whole lake here. Look at that. That would be so fun. It's called Tiki Boat Cruises. My Lord, the Oh, and there's a guy. There looks like the captain is there in his Hawaiian shirt there. Bob lives up Turkey Creek. Look at that. Quite a bit of ground up there. We've been turkey hunting just a bit. That would be a great time. Weeks ago. There's a nice little boat right there. And now it is time to 
Go back yeah. onto dry land. <laughs> the, the geese need to get out of the way though. <laughs> They're saying, hey, this is my spot. <laughs> there we go. Got some. There you go. Thank you, Goose. And uh, look at that. Look at that set up there. The accolade. Lots of cool RVs here. Look at that. Little picnic area. We had an RV here last week. It was pulled by a tractor, you know, like a tractor trailer. It was pulled by one of them, and it was worth $3.4 million, the whole Ooh. setup. And the car that they were pulling behind that camper was a Bentley. Oh, wow. What did them boys do for a living? Or, you know, it was, it was two guys. Uh, I just want to know. <laughs> oh my gosh, a whole row of Corvettes Seven of down them there. Like I wonder if that's wow. the paddling bunch. What a great view. Well, well, this, car shows and boat shows. Maybe well, this has been an town, amazing day here on the duck boat rides here in Branson, Missouri. View of the lake here. Bass Pro Shops over there. Thank you guys all so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate all of your support. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel. While you're at it, go ahead and hit subscribe and the little bell notification next to it so you can be the first to know when a new adventure comes out. Thank you all so much this for all of the support that you've given me so far. Until next time, I hope to catch you on the flip side. You know what you call a whole bunch of crows when they're all together? They're called a murder. A murder of crows. Yes, you have a question? You just knew that, didn't you? You knew that answer. Well, how about this? Did you know that the crows are the smartest bird in the avian family? Yep, they're the smartest. And they always fly in pairs. A lot of people don't know that, but you'll never just see one crow. There'll always be another one with it. And they fly in pairs, and they do that for a reason. If one's on the, on the road eating, you know, whatever it is for lunch that day, the other one watches for cars. And if he sees a car coming, he goes, ka, ka, ka. <laughs> that's, that's so they're from Boston then. Yeah, they're from Boston. That's weird. <laughs> that's I don't awesome. know how they get there. <laughs> <laughs>